President-elect Donald Trump may tweet a lot about what's on his mind, but he hasn't let on how he feels about art, which has museums, galleries, and private art collectors all trying to guess what he'll hang in the White House. WSJ art reporter Kelly Crow joins us now with more. Hi, Kelly. Great to see you. Hi. Good morning. Thanks Kel for having me. Kelly, do most new presidents seek to redo the art collection in the White House beyond just redecorating their private quarters? Yeah, you know, it's fascinating because I think if you look through history books, the, the way that the White House look reflects the sort of the sign of the times, right? So yeah. you got a lot of Western art during Bush's administration. Um, you got a lot of sort of chintz and ivory wallpaper <laughs> during the era of Nancy Reagan. It does actually matter, and each president sort of does put their slight stamp on it. And people may not realize this, Congress actually sets aside money for this redecoration process. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I wish I got this kind of bank when I started a new job, but Congress sets aside $100,000 for each president to redecorate their upstairs uh, residences as well as the Oval Office. In addition, there's a nonprofit trust that basically buys sort of almost whatever the president sort of asks, you know, to go in there. So wow. you saw the Obamas put in a lot of modern art. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll see, you know, the Ab question now is uh, what will Trump put in? Well, absolutely. So I guess there's art in a collection that's made available, but you said there's also a trust to buy other kinds of art. So do we have any insight uh, into what Donald Trump might choose based on his past taste in art? Well, I did a little digging, and uh, there have been magazine profiles of uh, Donald and Melania Trump's $100 million penthouse in New York. And what you find there is they love the French. They're loving the gilded legs. They're loving uh, mirrors and marble. Basically, sort of whatever the Sun King loved in Versailles, that's what Trump goes for. And honestly, you know, he's one of those presidents who has a visual aesthetic intact when he takes office. If you right. think about the Trump brand has always been about sort of you know, visual sumptuousness. So, you know, it does beg the question, you know, how much will he bring that to bear, you and know, in the White it's House? It's so true. And there is a Renoir you found, correct? A reproduction that he has hanging rather prominently in his office. Is that right? Yes. Actually, it's the, it's Melania's office. Melania. has a, a, an 1874 Renoir painting called uh, Le Loge, which is the theater box. Um, and it shows a couple sort of watching the theater. The original is actually in the courthold in London. So right. we probably aren't allowed to get that. But there, are basically going to be able to work with a White House curator to draw up a wish list of works that they would love to borrow from um, basically, you know, any of the national museums on the on the mall and, and beyond. As a fun fact, also his cabinet also will get sort of first dibs on cool pieces they can hang in their offices. So, you know, it's a nice perk. Absolutely. For, for Absolutely. But Kelly, you also point out that there are some portraits in the White House that are likely to remain. They, they've sort of outlived all kinds of administration changes. Is that right? Yeah, I really found the pieces with bipartisan appeal very <laughs> endearing, actually. Um, there are some George Catlin portraits of Native Americans that have apparently been hanging in a hallway forever. The Gilbert Stewart uh, portrait of George Washington that Dolly Madison sort of famously took off the wall as the British were setting, you know, Washington <laughs> on fire. Uh, that has sort of always been in the East Room, and I, I'm, you know, would be shocked if Trump would move that. Another one is a portrait of um, Abraham Lincoln from 1869 that sort of always hung in the state dining room. Those are likely fixtures, and, you know, those probably won't get shuffled around too much. And I love that the art a president chooses does carry some significance. I mean, people really read into it. Like you said, the Obamas were known for bringing in some more contemporary pieces. I believe the first female African-American artist. Is that right? Yeah, I really love Alma Thomas. Uh, does these sort of really great um, geometrical abstracts, often with sort of really bright staccato brushwork. It's almost like pointillist work, but sort of on a grand scale. Um, and the White House, uh, during the Obama administration, bought her piece, Resurrection. Um, now it's on view. It would um, it would be sad if that went away. Um, who knows? Maybe Trump loves abstract work. It yeah. could be a fun change. Um, and uh, the Obamas did spend their own money to redecorate their upstairs offices sort of declining that $100,000. So it'll be interesting to see if Trump does that. Oh, that's a very interesting fun fact as well. Now, George W. Bush made his mark with his art selection as well, correct? The builders got some attention, both positive and perhaps a little negative as well. Yeah, I mean, he, he is credited with bringing the first African-American uh, painter into the collection. He bought a piece called The Builders. Laura Bush, I mean, this is really the first lady's bag, at least it has been historically. Mm -hmm, um, right. And she really championed uh, Jacob Lawrence, who's a great artist. Yeah. Um, 
the the one knock they got was that the piece shows, you know, guys doing a menial labor. Um, but certainly, I think the Obama administration sort of puts that to rest, and they brought in, you know, a bunch of other artists. They've got really, actually, pretty cutting edge taste with Glenn Ligon, um, other artists like that. I mean, they've got pieces about segregation, you know, in their upstairs area. I think Trump really has a great opportunity to sort of convey political messages and say sort of what he thinks is great about American art. Like, yeah. if he wants to do that, this is a really good opportunity if he chooses to seize it. There's a lot riding on the presidential art collection. All right, thank you, Kelly Crow, for that. Thanks so much.